All right, boys, I've got a story for you. So I was recording a video, something completely unrelated. Um, this fight right here, I stripped the live commentary I did for it. You guys are going to watch this fight again later in a few days. Um, I'm do I was doing this for something completely different. And I ran into this guy. Now, I felt like we had a very good fight. Um, he wasn't bad. Uh, it was a... It was a fairly uh, competitive match. Um, I ended up beating him, and then he sent me a message. And in the message he sent, he pretty much said that I ran the whole entire fight. And so that led to me challenging him again. And this time I told him, okay, you said I ran the whole time. Now let's do a toe-to-toe -to -toe fight. Let's see who takes a step back. And then I'm going to show you guys that fight. So that's a short version of what went down between me and this guy. Now, first of all, Let's watch the fight that he said I ran in. This is the fight right here. I'm using Justin Gaethje. He is using and um, Dustin Poirier. So let's let's go ahead and see what happened right here. So um, the one thing you'll notice about him, he's uh, fairly very fair, fairly good with his pull counters. And when you're using Dustin Poirier, um, that is a very good skill to have because Dustin Poirier's boxing in this game is very good. And so I noticed that right away. I noticed that he was trying to back me up. He was trying to, like, you know, uh, overwhelm me from time to time. And in this fight, I really didn't want to go full-on Justin Gaethje on him. I was just trying to feel him out. I wasn't trying to go full-on berserk on him. So you'll notice that I'm, I give him ground from time to time. I move my head from time to time. I'm basically fighting like the Justin Gaethje of today as opposed to the Justin Gaethje of old where he was reckless and just crazy so you'll notice I'm like I'm kind of picking my shots I'm not really trying to shatter his block too much as I rock him right there and I sit him down I sit him down again with the uppercut left hand now, now watch this and perhaps you guys can tell me where I started running like where the running actually started because he he was under the impression that all I did in this fight was was run. Because as you guys can see, I'm the guy that's back in, uh, that's moving forward. I'm, I'm, I'm advancing. I'm taking the center of the octagon. I'm not completely shredding him. You'll notice I'm not throwing combo after combo after combo on him. I'm just pressuring him. I'm just keeping the pressure on him. And he's backing up. He's sidestepping over and over again. And that's why it was very, very surprising to me when I got the message I got from him. Because this is... The way he described the fight is definitely not how I remembered it. So I've already sat him down about three times. Um, right here, I, uh, I'm, I'm looking to just end the fight as I sit him down again. He's consistently looking for that pull counter. And of course, when players are fishing for the pull counter, it, it becomes a problem if you're uber aggressive against them. Um, but if you're picking your shots and you're kind of fighting the way I'm fighting him, it's not really going to be a problem because you can always read that. So, right here I'm using footsies against him. As I sit him down again, I get back up to my feet here because I don't want him to take my back for some reason. Look at that. He's really fishing for the slip counters. You deal with that with footsies. You come in, you back out, and the fight is over. Get him with a body shot, followed by a left hook, and knock him out. So right there, he quits out the match. I forget about this. I go, I go about my business. And then I notice he sent me a message, and you guys are going to see the message he sent right here. He goes, bum, just ran. I'm like, okay. I just ran. All right, then. Like, do you want to try again? Like, let's see who backs up this time. He responds with, yep, little bitch. Let's go. And I ask him to send me an invite. I always want them to send me an invite. Send me an invite. So he go he sends me an invite. Um, the reason I always do that is send me an invite. You pick your weight class. You pick your favorite fighter. You pick whatever fighter you want to go with. And let's do it. So he goes Dustin Poirier again, and as you guys can see, I went with Justin Gaethje again. And this time, I decided I'm just going to fight him reckless. Like, I'm, I'm not going to give him any respect. I'm going to stand right in front of him. And we're going to see just how good he is, because he, he accused me of running. So, okay, no more backing up. We're going to stand directly in front of him. And he's I'm either going to die or he's going to die. And so right here... 
I'm literally standing directly in front of him. And he's, of course, pull countering, slip countering, doing all of that. Like I said, those pull counters and those slip counters, they become a problem when you're being very reckless. If you're not using footsies, if you're not trying to trick them, if you're directly in front of them, that's when the pull and the slips, all that, that's when they become very potent. So keep watching. We're staying toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He doesn't understand that I actually enjoy fights like this in, in UFC 4. Like, I love it. Fights like these where it's a brawl. You're standing right in front of each other. You're barely taking a step backwards. You're just going at it. I really thrive in fights like these. And you're going to have to be a better player to actually win a fight like this. This is what a lot of players don't understand. They, they think a fight like this takes no skill. Like, the truth of the matter is, it does. And he had a weird opinion of, of himself. You know, he really thought, oh, it's, it's going to be a cakewalk if you just, I guess, not back up. Anyways, so right there, I'm like, dude, I thought you wanted to, to punch. Why are you, like, putting me against the cage? Like, come on, like, let's go. He got that drop right there, which, of course, I'm using Justin Gaethje. I'm not worried about that one bit. Like, the fight is nowhere near over. You can drop me a million times. As long as we're fighting a fight like this, you're going to have to finish the fight. You're going to have to end it. Now, oh, this gets worse. It all gets worse. And you'll see, he's... He's not bad. He's not bad at this style of fighting at all. But um, his view of what happened in fight one is extremely skewed. And you guys will see. If I set him down right there with a left hook. And you'll notice I am not backing up at all. We're just we're standing right in the pocket and we're going at it. And now he's <laughs> I'm like, dude, why are you side stepping? Come on, bro. What are you side? Why are you side stepping? I thought you want to do this. Like, come on. That's fine. That's fine. Keep going. Uh huh. That's okay. Come. He right here. He's try <laughs> he tries to get on top. I deny that. I get back up to my feet, and we're gonna get get right back to it. We're gonna get right back to it. In UFC 1, there was a tournament that we did, uh, me and a lot of really, really high-level players, we pretty much did this, where we stood in the middle, like the, the, the tournament was, or the, I forget what it's called, but we pretty much just said, we're going to stand in the circle right there, and nobody will take a step back. No one takes a step back. If you take a step back, if you take a step back out of the circle, you lose the fight. And it was a very, very fun, uh, very fun stream to do that. And I've been thinking about doing that again. So right there, he's dropped me a few times, but it it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And right here, he's you know he's feeling real good about himself, feeling really confident. As I sit him down against the cage. There we go. My goal was I don't want him to be able to ever say that I backed up against him ever again. Like I I know he, I knew he was going to make another excuse because that's just what all that's that's what they do. Players like these, they never ever accept that you beat them. They will always make an excuse. And so I I I, I knock him out right there, but I wanted to make sure that whatever excuse he makes next, it's not going to be you ran. And oh, trust me, he made more excuses. He made more excuses that you're, you're about to see right there. So right there he goes, that's what I thought, all talk, you got lucky. I'm like, okay, let's go again. Keep it coming. And so we're going to go again. This time I actually go mirror match. I go mirror match because I kind of had a, a thought in my head that next thing he's going to do is he's going to say that the only reason I'm able to survive is because I'm using Justin Gaethje and Justin Gaethje has high health. And so I went mirror match. I picked the same exact fighter he was using so he has no excuse. He can't say I, I beat him because I had the fighter advantage or whatever. And so I, that's why I went Dustin Poirier specifically so he doesn't have that excuse. So let's, let's keep going. He can't say, I got him or I survived because of my fighter. 
So I'm standing directly in front of him again. He starts using the sidekick to the body. And what that tells me is he, this whole toe to toe thing, he doesn't want to do it anymore. There we go. And like, I'm, I'm barely trying to be, look at, look at that. He shoots a tick down. This, at this point, I'm like, really? Like, <laughs> you don't want to do toe to toe anymore. Okay. Come on. Oh, he turned into a panic wrestler. Trust me. Trust me. There we go. This is a dude that 100% you can tell beats a lot of players, you know? And it, it just, it stings when you're the one that's usually beating on everybody. And then you run into somebody that beats you, you know? It's very hard for players like this to admit that they were just out game. As I sit him down right there, and it's gonna get way worse. It's gonna get way worse. Right here, I'm straight up shredding him. Shredding him. Mind you, I did not fight a fight like this against him the first time we met. I didn't fight this way. I wanted to fight him like super technical while maintaining pressure. I did not fight him this way. I mean, what I'm doing right here is I'm just literally just ripping through his block. As I sit him down again, I'm like, I don't want this man to have any excuses whatsoever as I knock him dead in round number one. Oh, but uh, he definitely had excuses. Watch this. His next ex excuse, bum, I doomed you. You mirrored me like a bitch. Then he goes, keep spamming, bum. <laughs> He goes, you're trash, go run scared. I'm like, do you want to try again? And this part, he starts telling me to quit, quit. I'm like, what do you mean quit? Like, what are you talking about? And so we did it again. We did it again. And this time I decided to go Conor McGregor. Because now he's, now he just said, apparently mirroring me picking Dustin Poirier as well is a sign that I am a bitch. And now he's accusing me of spamming. So I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna pick Connor. He was throwing sidekicks at me in fight uh, in the last fight, and so I decide I'm going to use the same weapons on him. But this time I'm going to use Connor. And you guys are going to see in this fight, he straight up just abandons the whole idea of not backing up. Look at him, he's backing up. He just completely abandons the whole plan we had of not backing up at all he's going to start backing up he's gonna start shooting takedowns he's gonna start doing everything in his power to maybe see if he can win this fight look at that <laughs> look at that he turns into a panic wrestler oh he's gonna shoot more look at him and right here I'm just like you're the one that wanted this. You're the one that wanted this. If he would have wanted a regular old rematch where we just fight, you know, like a normal fight, we could we could do that. We could easily do that. But man, if you're gonna challenge, if you're, if you're gonna call me a runner and you're going to like pretty much challenge me to a toe to toe fight, you're gonna have to be a better player, like an actual better player, to be able to win a fight like this. You just have to be. Rock him again. There we go. Rock again. Sit him down. And we're letting him up. He throws that overhand. You guys can see he's consistently trying to trying to pull counter, which again, like I said, is a very good tactic to have when someone is, is really pushing you. I can hit him with another front kick to the body right there. Now he's, he's using brute force. Brute force.
yeah, after this fight, man, I realized this dude was wasting my time and I just moved on. And I just realized that no matter what, he's just gonna make excuses. It doesn't matter how I fight him. If I fight him super clean, if I fight him super clean and, you know, I take back steps, move forward, just, you know, do everything. Move forward, back up, be aggressive. If I just fight him clean, he's going to find an excuse. He'll call me a runner. He'll say I'm scared. If I fight him like I'm fighting him right now, he's gonna do what they all do. You're a spammer, you're a block breaker. And if I start wrestling him, if I start taking him down, he's gonna call me a cheeser. I can't beat him without grappling. You realize that a player like this, no matter what you do, they're going to find ex an excuse. They're gonna find a reason why you beat them. And so I just, what I wanted to do right here was I wanted to beat him enough times to where I leave him with this. I just, I leave him, I leave him with that. Deep down inside, he's gonna know what's up. No matter how many excuses he makes to me, deep down inside, I know, he's, I know he knows what's up. And that's it. That is the story. Hope you guys enjoyed story time. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. Have a good one, boys.